Hello and welcome to my university blog which is today also modern railway related. It's about the history of the UK modern railway, uh, yeah, railway, UK modern railway history. So I've been asked to do some research on the history of modern railways and I did for documents about a thousand words. So I'll go through it and tell you what I found. Uh, the full document will be a, won't be available to general public, but it will be available to my tutors. So the first company, the first company to produce modern railway items was Martling, and that was in 1891. The first model buildings were made in England in 1904, so our hobby is about 130 years old. The first model railway magazine that was produced was in 1909, and that was called Model Railways and Locomotives. If I keep on looking down, it's because I've got my iPad, so if I hold my iPad here, I should be able to be seen. So after the First World War, Hornby started to make model trains as a as a was an anti-German feeling, so Martling had dropped had been forced out for English market. Hornby had already had a success with Meccano system. The name Meccano actually stands for Mechanic Made Easy, which is something I never knew. Uh, the owner of Hornby was. Frank Hornby. The first uh, Hornby was produced in O gauge. I model in double O gauge. This is actually HO's, but roughly the same. Double, no, O is double the size of this. So, that's a, uh, that was to a scale of four millimeters to the foot. This is one of the Oddities in the modern railway world, which I find quite amusing, we scale millimetres to foot. So we're doing a, a, a metric to imperial conversion, but it worked out quite well. Uh, Markling had already started with some electric trains in the 1980s, but the first Hornby trains were clockwork powered. And they were held together with some of the Meccano parts. But the first Hornby electric train was released in 1925. But it wasn't particularly safe. It was running for mains voltage. So when you consider you have two tracks at Spose running at 230 volts or 150 volts, depending on which country you're in. And actually, I'm not sure if power was standardised at that point. Uh, if you were to touch that, you're a goner. That was quickly resolved and went down to a 6-volt system using batteries. Um, another name which was in early uh, model, model railway history was Bessett Lowe. But this was more of a large scale. They created gauge 1 uh, and garden railway sit on things and they started production in 1902 and in 1912 they started to produce their architectural range which gave you things that could be used as accurate models. In a, a early example of a model railway that still exists is the Maiden Valley uh, Railway. This was made by John Aham in 1930 and it still ran on a few occasions at the brilliant Pendown uh, Modern Railway Museum in Oxford. Uh, one of the things you can see in that model is how everything had to be handmade. Uh, so what about today I can buy a model off a shelf. Those days you would need to design and build that. Um, another early example of motor railway 
It's a back in Scott model village, uh, which uh, started in, her idea came in 1928 when uh, Mrs. Callaham, the wife of a, a person who created it, made a short moving speech which suggested that either the indoor model railway went or she did which was the point that the railway went outside and in 1929 the world famous attraction opened. This attraction had featured in many films and TV programmes. My favourite version of seeing it is in the Boreas movie. Um, so, uh, back to Hornby. Uh, of... In 1938, Hornby actually produced a first double O range, actually spelt D U B L O, and is a gauge that we use in England. Th this was uh, what. Hang on, this is what. This, uh, yeah, I, double, I model in double O, and this is half of O gauge. Um, and this is four millimetres to the foot. So again, this interesting comparison of millimetres to foot, which actually make designing models pretty easy. As long as you know it in feet, you can easily convert it into millimetres. So these models had uh, cast bodies rather than pressed bodies. Uh, which allowed it to have more details, but unfortunately, this had to come to a sudden stop due to the First World War. I don't mean the First World War, I mean the Second World War. After the Second World War, um, model railway started to, to make a comeback, and the technology started to move on a lot. Uh, Hornby started to, over the years, uh, get behind with uh, railway system because they were using a three three rail system, whereby you have uh, two common and one neutral, so it had to make contacts on two bits. But a lot of companies, uh, such as Tryan, uh, was starting on two rail system, so. For Hornby was looking more like a toy. Uh, in the nineteen fifty, we started to get some big names. Some of them are still about, and some of them are long gone. So you had Tryan, Lima, and Pico. I still buy Pico products to for stay. They still make the best trap for the UK. Uh, and other names that you will know of is Airfits. But those models were more detailed, cause making Hornby to look more like a toy. Uh, over the following years, uh, Hornby went to a two rail system. And then Hornby was bought out by Triang. So the Lehman Brothers who owned Triang uh, created the Hornby Triang name. So that was in 1964. Also in the 1960s, another gauge was introduced and that was N-gauge. So that's half of a gauge of this, so two foot, two millimetres to the foot. Um... So, uh, one of the examples of manufacturers of it, the main one at that time was Graham Fe Fe Fesher. And we know that they had been taken over by Batman, but that's later on in this. By 1972, Hornby had dropped the Triang name and was just known in the hobby as Hornby Hobby. And in 1976, the first digital system was released. This was for Hornby 01. 
let me check where I am. For, this allowed you to control more than one loco on the track without having to have section switches. But this system used a 4-bit bus which meant you could only have 16 locos on the track at any one point. As 4 bits only give you 16 addresses. But as well as the points you could also control accessories such as now, as well as the locos, you could control accessories like points, signals, and um, things like that. So, in now for a bit about Batman, as I have said quite a bit about Hornby. In 1989, uh, Batman UK was actually formed with a branch line range. But the story of a uh, Batman coming to England date back to the 1970s when Airfits uh, broke into the modern railway market. They used a company called Caden, uh, K A D E R. The, this company is still in use and they are the producer for further manufacturers that actually produce Hornby as well as Batman these days. So, uh, efforts used for Kendon manufacturers, they actually produce models for them, but by 1983, uh, efforts have uh, failed and they were left with two companies trying to take over for um airfits range they were um replica models and a dapple at from that point Ah, oh, I forgot a little bit. Uh, yeah, so Deadpool went and got for a lot of the outfits mouldings, and you can still buy those nowadays. And Rapid, Rapid Rail was about to take on the mainline range, but uh, in 1987. K Kendall gained control of Batman and wanted to produce another range which is for Pelion toy range. Uh, so uh, they were also producing models. They they went to um, Repli Re Replica Rail uh, to see if uh, they would want to be part of Batman but they said, no, we want to uh, stay on our own. They, were, they took on for Patient Troy range. And um, so uh, Rapid, Re Replica Rail went and produced the um, mainline range. So Batman produced the branch line range. So, uh, that why it's Batman Branch Line. Then in 2000, Batman took on Gray and Farish, which is an engaged company. Then, so that's have all been created to bridge. So just to bring you up to date with what's actually happening in for hobby. We have four main gauges we use them for UK. Double O, N, O, and T. Uh, so T is tiny. A T gauge train is about that big, and I have a layout in the box over there. And there are four major manufacturer of model railways, actually four and a half. So Hornby is still there, 
Batman are still there. You've got Company Cold Hygiene and you've got Deadpool. You also have a Rapido Trains who produce for other manufacturers. So, uh, for other major advances is DCC. This is one of the things I specialise in. Originally, you could just have one train going backwards and forwards. With DCC, you can add functions such as working headlights, several trains on the same piece of track, and uh, you can also have working sounds. I have also seen working couplings, functions, and all kinds of things. So, not everyone have uh, not everyone use DCC, but it's something which a lot of people have adapted. And this modern railway hobby isn't just an uh, English thing; it's world ra- ra- well, worldwide. I have friends in America who are modern railwayers. And the world's biggest model railway is in Hamburg. It's Miniature Wonderland, which is in Hamburg, and it's an absolutely amazing place to go. So, that was my abridged version of the history of model railways in the UK. I hope that you enjoyed this, and I have given you enough information. Thank you very much, Richard.